Okay. Now, hopefully, we can get that. Mute this. Hi, guys. Okie dokie. Okay, so hello and welcome everyone to this is the uh, downstairs witchy area, which pretty much I just have taken over the whole house. But let me first say hello to everyone. This is going to be a good opportunity to use our new system where the admins are going to be able to tell me um, what questions have come up because I can't see all the way across the room there to on um, the camera. And so I, and I try not to do, you know, do this the whole time. But, okay, so hello, Maddie and Life of Bax and Caroline, Debbie and Steph, Sherry Bug, Karen, Stephen, Hexen, Jackie, Keith, Little Dandelion is here, Ashley, Denise, Hi, 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 Cheyenne. Hopefully it won't freeze. I hope not, Janelyn. Althena, Leland, Anastasia, Dave, Alexa. I verified my account now so I can go live and upload longer accounts. Yay! Oh, good. Good, good, good. Angela, hi. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> You know me, I, I'm just honest in me. So about five minutes before Maddie's live ended, I thought, oh shit, did we have a topic already for tonight's live? And um, so I quickly um, messaged my, my admins to ask them and they said, um, nope, not at all. <laughs> I thought, okay, what am I supposed to do then? So I said, okay, hold on. Let me um, ask Spirit what the hell I'm supposed to do tonight. And I think it was Hexen that said, hey, can we talk about like altar tools and the basics and what the difference between a bowling and uh, anathema is? And thought, hell yeah, we can do that. But then I had to come downstairs and kick my husband out and kind of just make sure I could set up the camera down here and stuff. So here we are. Yay. Because um, most of my altar tools and stuff are down here, so I really needed to do it down here. So, yay. All right, so let's start with, because I know it came up today, I think, in Dave's live, although I was on and off in Dave's live, so I don't, why is there, oh, Peter, never mind, I was going to say, my Athame's wands and bowling knives and stuff are all in I keep them in a silver tray over here. And um, right now, <laughs> there is on the top here, which I didn't notice until before, this big, huge, this does not belong here, but it's because my husband is hiding it from my aunt because it's a really good knife for the kitchen. So he hides his stuff in here. Okay, so... Um, okay, so I'm here doing laundry. Hi, Christy. All right. Hi, Molly. Hello, 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 everyone that's coming in. Okay, so um, I'm going to pull out my trusty, dusty... Athame and a couple examples of the different kinds of athames that I have so that you can kind of see there's all kinds of different, where's my, oh, I think it's in here. Yep. Okay, so 
Um, I have, I have athames from years now. This is years, guys. We're talking, hold this Frank. So at least 10 years, probably a little more than that. Oh, okay. So Joey, so about 15. So about 15 years that I've been collecting and keep in mind that I plan on opening a witchy shop. So that's partly what all of this stuff is, is for the witchy shop. Um, so my first athame um, was this one. Uh, and I usually don't even take it out of the sheath because an athame is just for, and somebody messaged me, okay. An athame is just for directing energy. So when you use an athame, now I can take it out of the sheath. And I personally, oh, my sons have gotten into it. I was just going to say, I personally um, do not sharpen my athames because they are purposefully supposed to be dull. Because you're directing energy um, with it and you're not cutting anything except energy with your athame. Hi, Steven. So when you pull out your ethmine, like I said, 90% of the time, probably, I don't even take it out of the sheath because you are not cutting anything but energy with your ethmine. The ethmine is just uh, $600 ooh, ooh, um, because it, it is not a cutting tool for stuff. It is just to uh, direct energy. It is like a wand, but, well, I shouldn't say that. Hold on. Let me see what Scott Cunningham, I will say that to me, a wand is, um, is air energy uh, and, and belongs to the air um, element. And an athame is fire energy and belongs to the fire element. So to me, they are a little bit different when they're directing energies. And one is female, not female, feminine to me, which is the wand. And the athame to me is masculine. Now, do I know what Scott Cunningham, the great Scott Cunningham says about that? No, I'm not sure. Um, so the magic knife or athame, this is from Scott Cunningham's Wicca, A Guide to Solitary Practice. Yes, a wand's energy is softer. Yes, athame, airy ver versus fiery. Exactly, for sure. Um, it isn't used for cutting purposes, but to direct energy raised during rites and spells. It is seldom used to invoke or call upon the deities for it is an instrument of commanding power and, manip and power manipulation. So that's a different thing to me than a wand. Um, we, we'd rather invoke the goddess or God, not command. So when you are drawing down the moon, when that kind of stuff, you're not using your, your athame. The knife is often dull, usually double-edged with a black or dark handle. Black absorbs power. When the knife is used in ritual to direct energy, some of this power is absorbed into the handle. So only a tiny amount, which can be called upon later. With the sheath still on, can you still cut a door in your circle? Absolutely. Absolutely, because to me, this is a tool in and of itself. So when I am directing energy with it, actually, when I hold it, if I use this one, this is my oldest one, so I kind of use it a lot. Um, but I, I don't even hold it like a knife because to me, it is to direct energy and I am 
directing energy. So I am directing that energy away from. And with, because it's anathema and it's fire energy, it, it opens that energy. It gives it a tiny bit of space. Jen, in ceremonial magic, a sword. I missed it. A sword is used in place of anathema. Um, for some people, that's true. A sword can be used. My uh, oldest and my youngest sons, actually, I didn't bring any of, oh, I don't even know if any other swords are here anymore since they don't live here anymore. But my oldest, my youngest sons often use swords. I do not because I'm a horrible klutz. So if I use swords, I'm going to stab somebody. Even if it's dull, I'm going to stab somebody with it. Um, so I, I, you know, Athame is as far as I get. Um, now, I'm thinking that this is not very clean. Again, sorry, guys. Um, so let me just show you because, again, with the sheath on, is, can it still direct energy? Absolutely. So this uh, is actually my oldest son's, but because it's ornate, he leaves it here because we use it. He likes to use it when we do rituals here. So this is his. Um, and again, now my sons like to keep theirs sharpened. I do not. Oops. I did not just do that to my sons. Ever. Um, <laughs> going to kill me. It's a good thing he's not home yet. So yes, my oldest son, by the way, is coming home. Uh, on Friday, so it depends on what time he gets home, but he's going to help me um, with Yule Fest, with our part of Yule Fest. All right, here is a bunch more athames. I saw a picture. Oh, I'm not going to pay attention unless it's in caps. Yes. Okay, this was my, who is 19 now, this was my 19-year-old's first athame, and he no longer practices. So I kind of inherited this athame and I always keep it. Um, this is a letter opener. You can get fancy letter openers, guys, because there is no reason for it to be sharp. Um, I always keep it for him in hopes that someday. Oh, you put something in caps. Sorry, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Scott says wand is fire and athame air, according to someone in chat. Perfect. Yes. And that's the way I think of it also, because the air energy is going to be way different than fire. Fire is purposely, it's much more forceful. And so it's purposely opening up a door or purposely forcing that energy out where you want it to be. That kind of thing. That is the athame power. Okay. So uh, I keep hoping that someday when he grows up more, he'll come back to the practice. He may not. And that's okay. Um, this one, this is called a, well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is called a purba. It's P-H-U-R-B-A. Uh, and it is very specific with the, um, the thing in the middle here. Some letter openers are beautiful and very affordable. Yes. So absolutely. You can, and I will tell you the flea market, if you guys are coming to tarot stock, the flea market, I think I got both of the two athames I've already shown and maybe these two at the flea market. They're really cheap, a lot cheaper than you would think. So you can find these. Look, at it even has a crystal ball at the top. Hold on. So you can find these for really cheap. Um, this, uh, the thing in the middle, oh, it's been so long now. It directs energy and builds the energy in the um, infinity before it shoots it out. And the thing in the middle is called, shit, totally lost it. It's a Buddhist thing, or maybe it's Hindu. No, I think it's, I think it's Buddhist. Um, so this is for uh, when I, do very specific things. Um, if I'm doing something with a peace thing 
or healing. I use it in healing sometimes, that kind of thing. Um, so Hindu, thank you. Thank you, Hexen. Um, this is Norse. And um, again, black energy absorbs some of that energy. So then you can use it later. It keeps the energy in there. Um, this is wood. Wood. Kalima carries up. Yes. Persia or Purba. Yes. When calling the quarters. Oh, I'm going to try not to pay attention. <laughs> All right. So this is what this is. A, um, actually Egyptian, I think. At Norse use it a lot too. This one. Wood. My son's made this a long time ago. Not even a pointy end, guys. This is rope in between. And then he wrapped stuff around here to make it look really pretty. So doesn't have to be some fancy thing. I've got a bunch of them because, you know, 15 years of accumulating and we had um, you know, I practiced with all, well, that's not true. My son, PJ never did practice with us, but I, I practiced with all three of my other sons before a bowling knife. Okay. So what's the difference? You have an athame, you have a bowling knife. First of all, let me go back to the beginning. Do we need an athame guys to do ritual? Do we need an athame on our altar? Do we have to have one? No. We don't need anything, nothing. You cannot ever say, I can't do a ritual because I don't have that thing. Nope. You do not need, you can use your finger to direct energy. You don't have to have a candle. You don't have to have anything. So these are just, as you grow in your practice, you want stuff and it's just about like, what is the spell? The spell is an intention that starts the intention and all the tools that you bring into it help to build your intention into as high energy level intention as you can before you release it into the universe to allow the universe to do its thing. So there is absolutely nothing you need to do ritual to um, do a spell to do nothing you don't need anything um athame kinda uh, to me wood is um unless it's specifically designed to look like an athame wood is more air wand to me but and yes i think somebody said on there an antler it can make a good wand. Absolutely. It may be better if you're using an, antel an antler. If you're using an antler to um, use one that is a little bit more straight. Because otherwise your energy when you're doing it is going to be a little curved out. But you can. Okay, so bowling knife. What's the difference? Athames, direct energy. You are not cutting a damn thing with a bowling knife. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, with anathema. Okay. Long feather. There you go. Perfect. A bowling knife is made specifically to cut. And it is to cut specifically stuff for your magic. It is. I use my bowling knife now. A lot of people have, um, I've seen the curved. Normally, a bowling knife is curved. I've seen a lot of people um, that have, it's almost like a, uh, a crescent moon. Um, normally it's a curved knife. A lot of times it's a bone handled knife. Mine is antler. Um, and you cut herbs with it. So when I go out to harvest my herbs, two things. One is, I'll tell you my trick. Because when I go out to harvest my herbs, my knife is, my bowling knife is sharp. However, it is still one blade. So depending on what kind of herbs you're cutting to start out with, I um, cut the first 
of the harvest. So if I'm going out saying, okay, I'm going to go harvest my rosemary, I do my intention setting, ask the herb, is it okay, we're good, spiritual connection, ask my guardians, directing that energy and saying, okay, I'm going to do this. Get ready. I have my offering here. I'm ready to leave my offering that you're going to give me something. I'm giving you something back. Thank you, universe. And the first cut of that herb, I use my bowling knife. And then my bowling knife goes back into my little belt clip. And I get out my herbal scissors, which I probably have in my herb basket. And I cut away because... That would take me all day sometimes, especially if I'm doing my mint that's, you know, waist high by the time I get out there to it sometimes. It would take me all day long. So it's just for cutting herbs. You can also use it to engrave your, um, oh, I'm missing stuff, sorry. You can also use it to engrave your candles with your sigils as you're making sigils. You know, Maddie's doing the sigil thing. Um, you can engrave... What else? I was going to say something else. Candles. I don't know if you guys have said stuff already. Hold on. Let me go back just a little bit. Um, Because I'm missing some stuff. Okay. Yeah, but we want all the pretty things. Yes, we do want all the pretty things. Absolutely. We're witches. We like pretty stuff. Absolutely. And that's okay, too. I just don't want anybody to... Feel like you have to have that in order to participate in a ritual or to do a ritual for a sabbat, anything like that. Bowling can be used for cutting herbs and carving candles. There you go. Perfect. Absolutely, Hexen. Um, to direct energy only and invoking elements. So that would be the athame. And then Matt, athame for energy. Bowling is for cutting. That's right. That's exactly it. Athame energy does not have to be sharp. In fact, probably shouldn't be sharp. Although if you have boys like mine. Um, yes, when, when you see a question, Maddie, that because um, I'm trying not to pay attention so I don't get quite so squirrely as I have been on some of the lives lately, that I'm just going to pay attention to the um, the moderator's caps and questions. Um, so... At least it was a quick one. Um, what was I saying? Oh, athame should not be sharpened unless you have four boys like I do who sharpen every knife in the house, no matter what it is. They want it to be able to cut through skin because they are. Okay, what did I miss? Uh, Jen, can scissors be used as bowling? My sister got me a very intricate and detailed scissors that go in a sheath. When closed, they look like a sword, but they're scissors. Absolutely. Hell yeah. I was going to say, now, I wouldn't use this as a bowling, although you could. You could. Um, now, if you're going to do that, though, let's say, eh, you know what, guys? I really don't have a lot. You want to dedicate this pair of scissors to your magic work, though. Because anytime you pull a new new tool into your altar or into your magic workings, you're going to say, this is for my magic, M-A-G-I-C-K. For those of you who want that distinction, you don't have to. We've talked about that before. But um, you want to dedicate this only to your magical workings. You don't want to go cutting, uh, you know, Christmas wrapping paper with it, and then the next day go out and try to use it as a bowling. They should know that they are only for this kind of purpose. And personally, if I was going to do that, I would like put a couple symbols on there in in a permanent marker, or I would, you know, something to that effect. Um, so I did answer that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, magic is energy work. Yes. So magic without the K at the end means tricks, means pulling a rabbit out of a hat, means card tricks, 
means you have a black hat and a cape with red inside and black on the outside and you it's illusion work magic with a k is we are setting an intention and communicating with the gods goddesses deities energy spirit whatever it is that you feel is out there we are pushing energy to them and asking them to do something with that energy we are directing energy differently we are um, manipulating energy and spirit. So that is the difference between the two. Um, I saw something on here. My boys must be young, which they really are not anymore, but they were when we started. So I have, I'll have to post um, the first ritual that I took a picture of, like when there was camera phones and stuff. My kids look so little. I have to find that picture and I'll post it in our group because I was, I, it was so cute and my boys all look so little and they hate when I do that to them now, but I love it. Okay. Um, what else? Capital, capital, capital. Can you speak about that a little carving symbols into a ritual night? Okay. Yes, absolutely. So let's say, um, okay. I have to be careful because I am a terrible klutz. My family knows like not to leave me with sharp knives. Um, let's say that you are going to dedicate this to your magic with a K workings and you want to put um, a sigil, put some magical symbols on here. What could you put on here? A number of things you can. I have um, for me and myself, I have um, my witch name, which I, we in the beginner witch series, we talked about. Do you need a witch name? No, but do you want a witch name? It's up to you. How do you get a witch name? I have put my witch name into a sigil. So it's my personal sigil. Um, and I will mark my tools that I haven't, um, that, that don't already to me, that aren't come to me as this is a magic tool. Um, I will put in uh, on the blade or on the handle someplace, or depending on what kind of tool it is, I will put someplace my sigil onto it, onto it because I want to connect to this energy. And that's right, there's no rules, guys. What, what works for you works. How many times do I say that, right? If it works for you, it works. Um, do you have to? No. But you should... Do some kind of ceremony or do some kind of, like I always, it's called consecrating your tools. So when you get a new magical tool, when you want to bring that into your magical working, you're going to introduce it to your magic. Introduce it to yourself. Say, I chose you. I want you to connect to spirit for me. I want you to help me in my magical workings. All for the greater good. I want you to realize my intentions and I want you to work for me and only for me. And push that out there. However you need to do that. If it means you're making an, your own sigil, if it means you may want to put, I think of uh, an athame as fire. So you may want to just put the um, element symbol for fire. That's okay. You, you may not want to do anything. That's okay, too. I'm just saying uh, it's nice to introduce a new tool. When you get a new tool, it's um, like I see people, same with anything, though. I see people get a new tarot deck. And I hate to pick on Dave. If you're still here, Dave, I love you. I love you, love you, love you. But um, the other night, he got a new tarot deck, opened it up. He's like, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to use it for readings. And I kept saying, and I was like screaming at the TV because you know me. I'm That's how I am. I'm screaming at the TV. Just blow into the cards. Please blow into the cards. At, at least put your energy, put your stamp onto this deck. Before you go using it for your magical workings, you have to at least introduce yourself to this new tool. So I, I'm like, please... And you don't have to do any magical working. You don't have to do that. But you want to at least introduce yourself, right? You want to at least say, you're mine. 
Your this is mine to use for my workings. So at least blow your energy onto that. That's the it, at the very least, just go, ah, guardians, guides, help this deck work for me. Ah, no, he didn't. Okay, he kept using it. And I was like, please, I think he did once. He was like, blow on the cards, but, but he like it didn't connect, and that's okay. I just thought you could do that with yes, yes, I suppose you could. Um, but it depends. For me, that's not enough because I also allow my client to shuffle if they're in front of me. So I just know I want that the first energy that it meets and connects with to be mine. And I want to claim it. This is for my magic. And then my clients pick up my stones. I know some witches are like, don't touch my stones. You know, you always have to ask because some witches are like that. That's okay. I don't mind because everything that I have that I use for my workings, I have claimed as mine. They know that they're mine. And I have somehow my energy has been put into them already. Okay. Sorry, guys. I know I'm kind of long-winded. Let me go back up and find some um, some questions here because, oh, wow. Sorry. I missed so much. This is still hard. <laughs> Uh, okay. Where am I? And then it jumps. Okay. Basically, Houdini did magic, which is do magic. Yes, exactly. Can you use your athme and wrapping presents if you're incorporating them with magic? Yeah. If it, if that wrapping has, has a, a purpose for you in your magic, if you're using that to protect it magically. Yeah, you could do that. I would still be careful. Um, scissors, you know, you don't want to cut paper and herbs and stuff because scissors are screwy and you can get them, you know, they, uh, yeah, what am I trying to say? Sharpen. It's, it's hard to sharpen them right. Um, I was told you can stab evil beings with the athame. If it works for you, I know you guys see my face when I read that, though. Stab evil beings. <laughs> sure. If And here's the thing. that If you believe that and it works for you, pff, awesome. Go right ahead. I personally would not be doing that. But that's that's my thing. To me, if there is a malevolent energy, a malevolent spirit here, then I am... Dabbing is, that's, to me, that's a physical thing, and I need to, I need to be in the spiritual realm, but that is, that's my mindset, that's how my intention and my energy stuff works. If yours, if you can put yourself into that spirit realm to do that, awesome. I just, I think my brain has a block or something. Uh, Angela, I would use a bowling to cut up paper and gift wrapping. Yep, absolutely. Um, Jen, I typed, oh, okay. Consecrating your tools. It's basically blessing your tools for ritual use. Some witches anoint them with oil, present their tools to the elements and their gods of choice. Absolutely, for sure. I uh, Isn't shuffling, oh, yes. Yes, shuffling is putting your energy in. Again, it's to me, it's not, it's not enough of a clear thing. Because like I said, I let other people shuffle my decks too. And maybe now, if you're a person that is like, uh-uh, you don't touch my decks. Even if I'm doing a reading for you, there isn't anybody else going to shuffle your decks for you. Then that's okay. Then that deck will get that that's a personalized thing to you. I just know I want to somehow formally state in my head, in my magic workings, you are mine. You feel my energy. I want to feel your energy. See that we pass this energy back and forth a little bit and say, aha, uh -huh, yeah, you feel me? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, guardians, good. Whew, let's go. It, it can be as simple as that. It can be as ceremonial as casting a circle, lighting candles. You know, it depends on how big that magical tool is going to be in your workings. Does that make sense? I hope. 
some of the things that I did not consecrate create were corrupted by negativity. And that's why right there. And don't forget, us thrifters, we're getting stuff that was somebody else's. So we have to start off with a, with a first step of smudging. Whew. Let's get rid of that, whatever it was before. And then let's um, re-energize it with us. Our intentions have to come back into that and say, whew, this is me. Now you're clear. Now I'm going to re-add me back into you. Um, okay. Have I missed any? It keeps jumping on me. Sorry, guys. Can we use a small kitchen knife as an acme? Absolutely, honey. Absolutely. Again, I would say that it should only be used for your magical workings, though. As long as you say, this is my magical workings knife, this is not my steak knife, then you can use absolutely. What was your first acme? Uh, is this one. This is my first one. And it's funny, you can tell that my boys use it sometimes. And it's a lot prettier when I shine it up, but yeah, I've seen beautiful letter openers too, for sure. I mean, this is, like I said, guys, this isn't just a fancy letter opener, but you know, it's got a, a crystal at the top. You know, it's got a cobra on it. Just a, a letter opener. You just have to say, this is mine. Uh, Serena, you can cut through negative energy, but not cut a ghost per se. Yeah, I agree. I, it, but that, again, that's just me. If you feel that energy and it works for you, awesome. Glad to be Danish. We can pick up any feather we find. Woo! Go Vikings. Hi. Oh, hi, Dustin. I didn't see you come in. Okay. Uh, how are we doing? I uh, love this corner. It's my fave. Oh, thank you. I love this corner too. I I feel bad sometimes because I have to kick my husband out because this is also the TV room, but eh, he's okay. Uh, do you have a go-to concentration ritual or chant that you use? Uh, I do. It um I again it's Scott Cunningham is really good guys. I I can't recommend Scott's books enough. It's especially if you start out with, and a lot of this basic stuff is, um, and I don't mean to say basic, like looking down on, by the way, hopefully you know that. I just mean when you're beginning and you're like, oh shit, what, how do I do this? Um, Scott Cunningham's book is a great book to start out with because there's a little bit of everything. It kind of gives you an example of stuff. And then don't forget my Pinterest page because if you go in to my Pinterest page and look under the tab BOS tools, not only have I put a ton of tools there that I want that I was like, oh, look at that FMA, look at that broom, look at that cauldron, look at that this, look at that. But there's uh, rituals for consecration. There's, And so you can kind of look at a whole bunch of different ones and say, this is, I really like this from this one. And I really like this from this one. So I have taken kind of pieces from Cunningham and, and Raymond Buckland and Starhawk and uh, the ones that I like, and um, then have, you know, kind of pushed the stuff I liked together and used that. I'm trying to find, sorry. Mm -hmm. Look at my fingers, which is you know probably not the best idea. Oh come on. Uh I think it's under rituals. I don't know why. I might be crazy, but recipes for oils. All right, hold on. Tool dedication. There's there's a whole thing somewhere in here of tool dedication. 
Tools, consecration of 124. Here we go. Uh, so, consecration of tools. Here we go. And again, you don't have to follow this. This is just a basic idea. Light the candles. So, have a couple candles. Set the incense smoking. Put some incense in there. Cast a circle of stones. See, now, now Cunningham will get very... Um, very formal on you. You don't have to go that formal, but let's say you have a big item, your big besom that you want to consecrate for just your magical workings. You could do, you know, a big, or I think um, my big cauldron, here it is right here, that I use in my outside rituals and stuff. I did a whole circle with this bad boy because I use it so much. And it's such a, a, to me, the cauldron is such a focal point because it's the womb and it means like the turning of the year and the goddess's womb and all the stuff that happens there. So it means a lot to me, but um, place the tool on the pentacle or the plate of salt. If you have a pentacle on your altar or a plate of salt, touch it with the point of the magic knife or your projective hand and say, I consecrate you, O oh, knife of steel or wand of wood or blah, 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 whatever, a cauldron of cast iron or whatever, to cleanse and purify you, to serve me within the circle of stones. In the names of the mother goddess and father God, you are consecrated. So what are you doing there? You're setting that intention. You're saying to this, Athame, you're mine. I am claiming you for my magic and my magic alone to work with my gods and goddesses, to work with my deities, to work with whatever that is for you, right? Okay, uh, where are we? Any other questions? How are we doing? Do you have to, oh, okay, that's the question. Awesome. Scott taught me everything I know. Oh, Raven, yep, Raven Gramasi, absolutely. She's good too. I have all of her books, and I haven't read, but maybe one of them, though. But I love my uncle, Uncle Bucky. Yep, he's my he's my babe. I know. I can't believe he just died. Well, just died. It was probably two years ago now, but it seems like it was yesterday. Um, uncle Bucky. Okay. So, uh, what else? What else do I have in my little? Oh, okay. Wands. So, wands. Wands can be again as simple or as goofy and ornate or it wands can be whatever you want whatever you want whatever works for you okay so let's start with this is the most obvious one i use this a lot at beltane though it was you know in a tinkerbell thing i think i got it at a thrift store for like a quarter and the little butterfly is kind of hi pamela is kind of um, falling off it and stuff, but it's a really cute little Beltane one, right? I have to kind of glue it back on. Cute little Beltane one. So I have that one. I have um, one of my son's, one of his first wands, he got in his Christmas stocking. It's a, a lightsaber for big Star Wars fans. So he used a, a lightsaber for years. Now I have it. Directs energy. You better believe it directs energy, let me tell you. Uh, this is one that um, I uh, carved or whittled down the wood part. And then um, my oldest did the router marks and stuff. And then he finished it for me and, you know, did it all perfect. This is the first one I ever made. This is from my grandmother's lilac tree. And I have burned with pyrography. Here's, uh, you know, the triple moon. Here's the goddess and here's the pentacle. See, I'm not a great artist, let me tell you. At the end, I used copper wire and an amethyst point. So this, to me, now I have, look at, I have a, here's a gorgeous wand that I bought with this gorgeous crystal, um, quartz crystal edge and a carnelian stone in there and all that. This should be a very powerful wand. I think I've used it twice. This I use every almost every time I use a wand because I made it. 
So there's something about its energy. I spent hours um, taking, stripping the bark and um, sanding it down and putting my symbols into the pyrography of the wand and wrapping the amethyst at the top. I did this. So my energy is throughout it, throughout it. And so when I, when I go to reach for a wand, this is the one I reach for nine times out of 10 without fail because I made it. It's all of my energy is here. I have my goddess. And you know what? It's not, it's not perfect, but I have my little spiral in there. I can tell it's a goddess. It's I this is my triple moon. This is my pentacle. So it's mine. And it knows it's mine. And I have never had a problem with directing energy with um, allowing that spirit to come through. Cause I use, when I use my wand, I use it two ways. When I do, um, like drawing down the moon, um, I use my wand to draw down the moon. And it, uh, to me, that visualization happens and I feel that energy coming through the, the amethyst tip and into me. So I, you know, if you make it, it becomes that much more powerful of a, a tool for you. Um, how are we doing, guys? Where are we? 32 minutes. Okay, we're doing good. I'm, I'm excited. Um, and I feel like I'm on track more. So this is working good, guys, don't you think? I think, I hope, you know, if, if we're missing your questions, then direct your questions to one of the admins and then they can do their thing with it. Um... How we doing? Good. Wand is more feminine energy. Athme is more masculine. Absolutely. And again, for me, that's how I feel with it. So the wand is fire masculine energy. I use it specifically to direct that energy. When I'm casting a circle, I'm using my athme because I want here. I want that energy to stop right fucking here. And inside my circle is my magic and outside is wherever the hell else is out there. But I don't want the two to cross. It is a very specific PowerPoint thing for me. My wand can direct energy out outwards and pull energy from above inwards or from below inwards and direct energy outwards. Okay, where are we at? Uh, Jen, is there such a thing as drawing down the sun as a ritual to the Lord? Um, you know, Hexen, if I would say absolutely. I'm trying to remember. I know I've seen the Egyptians have a lot more of that because of Ra. As a matter of fact, all my Egyptian books are right here, but um, I would bet that the Egyptians already have a ritual that you could just pick up here. Let me look. I think because my Egyptian books are right here. If I can get my butt out of the way. Uh, Egyptian, Egyptian, Egyptian. Yep. yep, yep. Okay, so let me see my Egyptian section of my library here. Egyptian magic. Preface. Come on. Okay. Magic stones, magic figures, magic pictures and formula spells. So, oh, ceremonies. Here we go. 182. Of course, it doesn't list them for us. Okay. 
Wow. Okay. This is a vintage book, which is awesome. And I would totally read it, but it's not, um, it's not separated very well. All right. The Golden Cauldron, uh, book, book of Shadows. Hold on. Eight seasonal rites of Egyptian paganism. Ooh, I wonder what the winter solstice rite is for the birth of Horus. I'll have to look that up. Anyways, I, I'm almost sure that somewhere in here uh, is something because it's it has to do with Ra. So I, I'm almost sure that there is something very similar. But the Egyptians' rituals are a little bit different. So I, I actually would like to go through a couple Egyptian rituals with you guys at some point. Um, how are we doing? Yes. Did I miss any? AF, what was that? AFK, what's AFK, Manny? Please, maybe you can talk a bit on that Yule ritual. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll kind of pull them out. I'll leave them out to remind myself. And Yule Fest. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Um, okay, so we did wands. We can talk about what other tools? We can talk about cauldrons. Um, your cauldron can be can be anything that you can use to burn in. Um, obviously, I'm going to have a pretty big collection, but so my first cauldron ever. For me, something about the cauldron I really connected to it. Because it's the goddess and it symbolizes the womb and stuff, there was something there with mother, something that I really connected to that. Um, so my first cauldron I actually bought from a witchy shop. And it has, you know, the little pentacle in it and it has a top on it. And I've used it a lot, but it's little. So I use it kind of for um, incense on the altar, that kind of thing. Um... Most of my cauldrons I find at um, thrift shops. This one is a vintage one. And actually, I think Maddie is getting the, right? Yes, yeah. Maddie is getting the twin to this. And it's got feet, which makes it the cauldron. And it's got lion and it's brass. Um, Look at a silver creamery. Cauldron. It's got feet. Now, does your cauldron have to have feet? No. But if it doesn't, keep in mind that um, you have to have some kind of hot plate or a, um, what do I want to say, an oven mitt or something underneath it so that it doesn't burn whatever you're on your table or your table, your altar cloth, your whatever. Um, it can be... Um, let me just look, because I think I have a couple more over here. This is my little cabinet of tools over here. So, uh, where is, oh, here we go. It can be. And oil, you know, the oil lamps. So you can put the candle down there and it's ceramic. This one happens to come into two pieces. So you can put the um, charcoal up here if you want. It can be as simple as that. So there, and there's oil, there, these things you can get at the thrift shop all the time really easily. So look, here's a little old vintage cauldron, spittoon, whatever, no feet. So I just know if I give this to someone or I put it in an altar kit, I make sure I have something underneath it. Usually I put a stone plate or something to put it on. So I, I yeah, I have a bunch of cauldrons too. Is there something about cauldrons? Because like I said, the womb thing to me is really important. So I always have a lot of them. Um, okay, chalices. 
chalices. I have a ton of chalices. Hold on. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to do this and hopefully switch this out so I can show you my tool cabinet all at once so I don't have to do this too many times. Did I plug these in? I hope it would be very helpful if I did. Of course not. Damn it. So my, I didn't plug my lights in. Okay. But so uh, I have my corn dollies. I've got a couple of them. The other one is down here because she doesn't fit. I have I have some of my candlestick stuff. I have the ones that hold the chime candles. I collect bells. This one my grandmother actually painted. Uh, I have offering dishes. <sighs> I have a whole bunch of different bells. Like this one is a good Beltane bell because it's, you know, really pretty and rainbowy. This one is always my Mabin bell because uh, it, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there. See the acorn? Uh, this one is Ostara bell. I know I don't have to have a separate one for each thing but you know that's just my weird thing um on this shelf i have a whole bunch of different offering dishes this is a uh incense offering dishes offering dishes i have my stone ones back here Oop, they fell uh that does uh incense i have these are i call them my um genie lamps because they they used to be ashtrays, but I burn incense in them. They can also be used as cauldrons. They're glass, but, you know, can be cauldrons. I have a big um, amber one back there. Um, these are my chalices, mostly. This is actually for my son, but um, I got my silver one back there. This, hold on, I'll show you my first one. <laughs> which is funny because I hardly use it now. That was my first one. And again, I bought it at a witch shop because I was a new witch and I was like, hey, I got to have that because, you know, it says witch, <laughs> you know, pretty much. Um, since then, I have found a whole bunch that I like at thrift shops. Uh, look at, I love the pottery ones. I have a bunch of pottery ones. This one holds a little bit on the top. I have, ooh, these ones, I have two of these. Look at, and they're metal. Um, this one I use a lot for Yule, although I'm using a different one this year because it has the oak leaves on it. This one may be my favorite because, look, it's separated into two, and I use it for Beltane because it's, um, you know, two become one, so for the great right. I know my collection is never ending. I know it is. That one has the moon phases on it. Uh... That one I thought was really cool and it has grapes on it. So it's good for like a harvest one. Again, this one is, you know, handmade pottery one. Uh, let's see what's down here. I got cauldrons. I have uh, salt candle, salt lamp candle holder things. Um, I have little things that I'm like, I haven't quite figured out what I want to use this for, but I really like it close i figured out like one of the things maddie's getting and i'll show you guys is um this which is for hanukkah technically but look at it has if you count them one two three four five six seven eight and then one in the middle so there's eight sabbats so i told them i'm going to include a candle color for each sabbat and then a purple candle for the middle one, um, which will be for spirit. So that is 
my tool shelf. Okay, so that's my tool shelf. Um, oh, and up on top, I did not show. Hold on real quick. Uh, this was the beginnings of when I didn't have any God or Goddess statues. I used to do stuff like I bought this at the zoo because that screamed God to me. It's a rhino. Um, this screamed God to me. So every time I found stags or stuff like that, I would um, get stags. I have, uh, this one is much more slender and stuff. Um, and then my goat. I love my big goat. <sighs> See my goat? I always loved, I used him for years. My big goat. <laughs> So those are all like my statues that aren't actually God or Goddess statues, but I got them at thrift stores and I'm like, oh yeah, I like that one. See, this one is obviously like a We Three Kings kind of thing, but he was a cool God statue for a while. And, oh, this is a Mother Mary that is all wood. So I used her too. Okay, so that is... Yes, very, very masculine rhinos. I love, and I love rhinos in general as an animal. I swear the coolest damn things to me. I, I could spend hours in the, where they hold the rhinos or where they put the rhinos and I go to the zoo, which I don't go to the zoo very often anymore because I usually sob uncontrollably, but I'll try not to talk about that because then I will sob again. But I do go to the zoo once in a while to support them because they actually do give a lot of money to conservation work and stuff like that. So unlike... SeaWorld, don't ever go to SeaWorld, and I'm not going to say that lightly, um, and that is not a, um, how do I want to say this, that is not an option. If you go to Sea SeaWorld and you uh, don't care about that, I, I don't like you. <laughs> and I don't know how to say that nicely, but there isn't any nice way to say that. I don't like you. <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay, what other things can cauldrons be used for besides burning things? Okay, tons of stuff. So, for instance, one of the Yule rituals that I've been looking at talks about talks about filling the cauldron with damp dirt, damp earth. Okay, and putting a white candle in the very center of it, like jabbing the white candle down in the center of it because we are symbolizing the darkness, the cold of the earth. And when the sun rises, you light that white candle, which symbolizes the return of the sun. You can use water in your cauldron, which symbolizes the emotion within motherhood. You can use herbs in your cauldron um, as an offering dish type thing. You can use, oh, it landed upright. That's cool. Um, so cauldron, you know, if you think of the cauldron, oh, I'm going to move you a little bit closer so I can see a little bit anyways. If you think of the cauldron as the womb of the goddess, there's all kinds of things that you can put in there to symbolize the goddess protecting something. If you're doing a spell and you want the goddess's protection, put it in the cauldron. She will wrap herself right around it and protect it, right? Okay. Um. All right. I don't know how far back I have to go. Okay, and Yule Fest. Good. Jennifer, if you have time, can you please refresh us on your Yule video celebration? Yes. So we will talk really quick. It starts uh, Friday at 5.30, I believe. Right, Maddie? And, oh, man, we've got to get together. I... Because I don't have a half day this week, it kind of went a little awry, but I have all of Friday off. So Thursday after work, maybe we can really pin stuff down. Um, so at 5.30, and I, we still need to create a tag, Maddie. We want a hashtag so that if you're having a hard time finding it, although we're going to figure that out, 5.30, yes, to 7.30 in the morning. So we're going to go all night until sunrise. Uh, and then, you know, 
between right, you know, before sunrise, we will be starting a, the joint ritual with 10 of us doing the joint ritual, which boy, do we have to talk about that? Oh my God, this is just came up so quick. Um, so I will just plan on, it'll start on my channel. That's partly why I wanted um, to start just the introduction of it. Yule Fest 2018. I love it. Um, so you can start on my channel at 530. I'm going to do the introduction and just, we'll just kind of talk about this is what we're going to do. Lay out the schedule, talk about, you know, whatever we can talk about, that kind of thing. So you can, if you don't know anything else, be on my channel 530 on Friday if you can, Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, can I ask what everyone is doing for their lives? I don't want to just do a haul if everyone is doing Yule stuff. Grandma, let's talk about, we'll do a, a private discussion. We'll start back up that private discussion and we can talk about that. I just don't want to do it in this setting. Um, do yay. Um, oh my God, Mama Squirrel, your collection is never ending. Oh yes, I know. It's kind of a, an obsession thing. Jen, uh, what other things can cauldron be used for? Okay, so that's uh, good. I'm there. Uh, chalice goals. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to talk about that, I guess. No, it's not that we don't, Grandma, at all. We do, but I just don't want to talk about that because it's that's a more in-depth discussion and I don't want to do it on this live because I don't want everybody else to have to be in that. They should just be joining the Yule Fest, but we will um, talk about it. Make sure Maddie has uh, you into the Yule Fest message thing on Facebook and we can talk about it there. Hopefully you have Facebook because if not, that's going to be hard. Um, I would love to, sh to shop at your witchy store. What could we call it? Right now it's called the magical labyrinth i just don't have it open right now grandma a hall would be great for you absolutely what other things can call oh i did that already what else can we use collagen for i did that good 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 uh maybe i would find a oh a best at in your store i'm having a difficult time finding one my egypt section is over here, what do I, I have like two, two of them over there. I'd have to pull out and show you here. Um, scrying is one of them. Scrying is, I'm sure that was for something that was already up. Sorry. Jen, will you, will you have the list of who's who's it on at what hours? Yes, 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 yes. Life of Bex, which is Christmas is Yule. Yes. Three days. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, try searching for stone or wooden statues. Okay, am I caught up? Yay. YouTube Yule Fest is 12 hours of multiple YouTubers doing lives every hour to celebrate Yule at 7 p.m. Right, Jen? Yes. Several of us, 7 a.m. Seven of us, several of us will go in at once to do a big ritual at the end. Yes. Uh, as the sun is rising. So, because the big thing about when the sun is coming back up is that that's what, that's what the ancients waited for. That's that's what we're lighting all the candles for. That's why we're hold, <coughs> excuse me, holding this vigil all night <coughs> is because we don't know. Is the sun going to rise again in the morning? The rebirth of the sun, S-U-N, is that going to rise? The um, renewal of warmth, the celebration of the longest night is over, and now we're back on schedule to hopefully each night will get shorter and shorter again until we get to midsummer. Yay. All right. Uh, did I miss any more questions? Guys, how are we doing? Uh, tools. Is there any other tools that you guys want to see that I have not gone over? <sighs> I'm trying to think. Hold on. Let me look at my... Alter. Okay. Statues, God and goddess statues. 
there's a million things you guys can do. I Like I said, I showed some of what I did before I had actual God and Goddess statues. You can use a stuffed animal. I have, as a matter of fact, for um, Imolk, I have a stuffed animal lamb that always goes on my altar. Because Imolk means use milk, E-W-E, -E, use milk. That's what it translates to. And that's because that's when the used milk starts coming. That's when the little baby lambs start to get born. And so the used milk comes in. And um, we're, we're celebrating knowing that even up here in the Northeast, that even though it's really cold still, we know that that stuff is starting to grow again underneath the earth. And we trust that spring is coming. And so I have a little stuffed animal lamb that my husband got me that goes on my altar every uh, every emulk. Um, so God and Goddess statues. Around this time, um, for a lot of the four quarter um, Sabbaths, I have uh, stuff that has to do with the sun. So here, I'll show you. This is my, I'll show you my Sabbath altar. My Sabbath altar is, whew, my card fell. My, oh. My Sabbat altar is um, set up for the upcoming Sabbat every, every year. This is going to drive me crazy if it doesn't stay. I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Hold on. Okay, just for a second. Okay, so um, to me, the left side of the altar... Ugh, it still didn't stay. All right, I'm taking it off because it's too annoying. Um, the left side of the altar is the goddess side. So uh, to me, silver means goddess. So I have a silver candle, a silver candle holder. Um, my Yule, this year, this is what I'm using for my Yule chalice because um, it kind of goes with my little green Yule bell. The goddess uh, is here uh, as the great woman. And I have a little tree and where is Belle? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I oh, the candles I always have, uh, separate candles, especially for you, all, is a lot of candles, so there's a lot of different. I have my goddess statue, is also a candle holder, then I have my little candle holder that I just got recently, then I have my salt lamp because light, 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 then I have my god candle which is uh, this year a golden deer that I had found. Then my pentacle, which has, uh, you know, it's little own, um, that reminds me is, uh, who was, oh, Brad. Brad isn't in here. And he's the one that wanted to talk about the Tom T, which is the little uh, elves or gnomes around Christmas time. Um, and this is, that's the Yule card. My God, this year is a brass um, horned God. And my husband just bought me that one. And then, so a lot of deer theme here. Um, gold is for the God. And then the Oak King and the Holly King will be fighting. So they are represented. Another candle, 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 light, light, light. Um, I have my little angel bell up here. Candle, sun, candle, my Yule log. Candle, candle, Yule Bell, candle. See my sun oil back there. So again, sun, 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 lots of sun stuff. Then I have my little uh, Yule Druids here in the front. My tree, my my little crystal ball here is supposed to light up more, but I got to change its batteries. And I have the Yule card. Then I have my element candles and Yule candle, Yule candle. And my antlers and my god reindeer here because that's who is rising. So I always put him at the top for Yule because the sun's rebirth is coming. And so on my little, you know, my pine cone um, lights. And then I have a, another tree at the bottom and, you know, a cutesy little thing. So that is my, ooh, I got to back up more. That is my Yule altar. For the Sabbath. So that's the Sabbath altar. So that altar specifically um, changes 
uh, as the Sabbath changes. So after Yule is over, then I will start getting ready for Immel, which to me is a really pretty altar too. Back here is my working altar. So this is, if I have spells going, they are on this altar back here. Um, I have some spells going back here. I have spells going here usually up here. So my working stuff is always back here because this is where my herbs are, my oils are, and that kind of stuff. And then I have an altar upstairs is my ancestor altar. And, oh, my Buddha altar is up on top there. Although that's embarrassing because I haven't dusted my Buddha altar in a while. So I probably won't be showing that one to you because, whoo, that's really embarrassing. Just looking at it from here, I'm like, holy crap, that's dusty. Okay. Maple syrup. No, that was oil, sun oil. <laughs> um, do we have any more questions? How are we doing, guys? Are we, what are we on time? 30, started 32 minutes ago. I think my thing stopped. I don't think we were only on for that long. Uh, Oh, I saw somebody, I'm always nervous about setting everything up. Yeah, no such thing as too many candles, especially for Yule. Because don't forget, 75 minutes, thank you. Don't forget that the Yule is the return of the sun. And so the reason I have so many candles is because in my house anyways, there's one candle that I will light that has to be on all night. Because you have to at least have one candle on all night, at least for me. That's how I do it. And the point of that, and it used to be they had candles in every window, and that's what happened. That's what started the candles in the window that you see for Christmas. That was to encourage the sun to come back. So everybody would put a candle in each window to say, hey, we're not covered in darkness here. We are encouraging that sun to rise. So another thing that was ours, we're encouraging that sun to rise up. Oh, this says 32 minutes because it froze a long time ago. Hold on. Let me look. Hold on. Oh, come on. Here we go. Okay. So let me see. It's coming back up. Hold on. I think we're almost done, guys. I, I believe. Unless you guys have lots of more questions, but. Okay. Um, do you save a bit of the old candle to the light next year's? Yes, I do. And it is in my drawer down there, so I don't lose it. But yes, I, I, my last Yule candle, I will um, snuff before, you know, gets about halfway or so, and I will snuff it before so I can save it for next year. Um, would you, oh yes, just answered that one. Perfect. Okay, so any other questions? Any other things about altar tools? I went over there originally just to look at altar tools. Candles are really important when it is a sun ritual. So it, it also becomes important at midsummer. Um, it is, it's important at the quarter festivals. Uh, so the equinoxes and the solstices. The Four quarter festivals. Okay, perfect. So are we good, you guys? No other questions? I don't want to cut you off if you have any other questions, but I think we're okay, right? Please, please do a scully tour at some point. <sighs> is Oh, my light is on now. I'll show you real quick if you want. Someone just asked about a fey altar. Um, so I, my Fay altar, even though I should have one up until Samhain, I do a little one at Samhain, but my Fay altar, I don't put a permanent one up until spring. So when, um, Ostara hits, cause my Fay altar is outside. So, and it doesn't have to be, that's, I don't know. I think partly because I'm encouraging them to be outside my house and not maybe so much inside my house. I don't want to invite them in quite so much because I'm good enough at losing my own shit and they tend to take a whole bunch of stuff and goes on the walkabout. So I, my Fay altar, I have up from Ostara until Samhain. And then usually 
my stuff comes in. Uh, do you represent God, goddess on your working altars? Uh, I do, but I do it with other things. So like um, I have a little plaque of, of the triple goddess. Um, and then because that's why my goat is facing this way, because he is uh, looking over this working altar. And then it depends on how much stuff I already have going on. But, all right. Um, I will do a quick thing to show. I finally got some of my lights on in my cabinet. So this is my stone cabinet. So let me just, all my lights are not on in my stone cabinet, unfortunately, because my top shelf is really pretty too. But... You're not going to be able to see a lot of it. This is mostly calcite. I, I have a bunch of calcite. I'm kind of a calcite freak. So this is mostly calcite, although all my eggs are back there, which they come out, of course, for Ostara. And I have them kind of at the forefront. We can see your tree Oh, in the reflection. Eee, there's the living room tree. Okay, so this is the Scully shelf. So we have uh, this is uh, gargoyles. And I have several gargoyles. Uh, and like this is a food dog. Um, two, and that there's a gargoyle. I have several gargoyles to protect the space. Um, to me, gargoyles are very protective. And so there is a specific guardian there. My, but like when I talk about taking my council, my gargoyles never are on the council because they are here to protect this space. Um, so my scullies, uh, the light is terrible back there. I don't even know if you can really see all of them back there. But then they come out. And there's Gaius. So he's the leader and he's on his pirate son. And his two dragons surround him because they protect him. And then his advisors, his two closest advisors are the uh, alien beings here. And then it comes back this way. And ends with my little scully snow globe back there. And then this shelf, I really wish, do I have a flashlight? No, I don't. Um, I could light this shelf up because this is my animals. I have these are all stone animals which are not going to be able to be seen very well because I don't have a light, do I? Oh, does my husband have? Hold on, let me just see. We have, uh, oh, 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 I have a little flashlight. Hold on. So at least you can kind of get an idea. Okay. So these are animals. I have my peacock. Uh... What's back there? Oh, I have a lot of dolphins because dolphins are very important to me, if you hadn't guessed. Then I have I have a bunch of donkeys, too. And I think that's just because I want a donkey. <laughs> Elephants up front because they bring good luck into the house. Elephants, turtles, ducks. Haha, <laughs> I didn't like that. Hold on. Flashlight on my phone. Yeah, it won't work while I'm doing a live video. <laughs> oh, wait. I got to move my buffalo out so you can see because, of course, buffalo bells. I got to have my septarian buffalo. Oh, you still can't see them. See my septarian buffalo? I love him. And I have scully bottles back there. Owl. So this is my crystal grid. This is most of the stuff that I use for the center of crystal grids. Although I do have like, there's a froggy back there and I have another pirate sun. But so this is like towel, towers, stuff like that. And that is a bowl of raw stones that I dug. And that wooden one back there is a bowl of raw stones that I dug. And this is right now where I put all my quartz back to. <laughs> and then the bottom... Oh, speaking of fairies, the bottom, this is mostly, I have a couple of glass cauldrons, but this is mostly my fairy lamps, which I switch these out weekly. Um, I use it.
fairy lamp every week. Um, and that's a brass cauldron back there that hangs. Um, because the fairies get bored if you if you um, leave the same stuff in there all the time, the fairies get really bored. And so I always have a different fairy lamp like every week when my fairy altar is set up outside. I switch it out every week because they get bored and then they will come back in the house and annoy me. So I switch stuff out a lot. Okay, so that was a quick tour, hopefully. Everybody's good with that. Yay! Was there questions? I guess I should look, huh? Because I couldn't see. <laughs> um, oh, there was questions. Hold on. Okay. Uh, do you have to be facing north, south, east, west? Do things, oh, do things have to be facing? Um, it depends on, uh, are you talking about on the altar? Um, I always have, I have little jewels, uh, which I probably, I didn't really, <laughs> as long as I'm here, hold on. Shoot. Whoops. Um, so these are, I use, see these little jewels? I think I got them, I don't know, at a Dollar Tree store or something. They represent the colors of the altar. So I always have them, you know, green is, is earth, north, south, east, and west. So I know where, um, actually, they're a little bit crooked, though. I know where true north is in my house now because I've been here long enough. But I always have them um, based on the true direction of north. Um, and so I... Uh, that's how I know my direction because certain magic I want to be pointing at a certain direction for magic. So hopefully that's what you're asking. If not, oops, sorry. Um, oh my God, that gar gargoyle piece. Oh, I love my gargoyles. My gargoyles protect very well. I've never had, um, well, that's not true. I was going to say I've never had a, a skull go on a walkabout except... I recently have noticed that my uh, rhodochrosite skull is on a walkabout. So, but other than that one, since I started my Scully collection, I have not had one go. So, do things have to be facing north, south, east, and west? Okay. Uh, I have a selenite wand and a fluorite wand. And can I use a Harry, Harry Potter wand for working too? Uh, yes, Johnny, you can. Uh, I would recommend, though, if it's a resin wand, resin, um, I have a bunch, I, I should show you my resin wands that my husband is so cute, he tries so hard. I literally, I think I have 30 wands that are resin wands that I don't know what to do with because resin sucks in energy and doesn't, it's not a conductor of energy, so it doesn't do anything with the energy. So they're like toys. There's nothing I can do with them. Uh, can... I make a tom tea to put on my Yule altar out of clay. Absolutely, Maddie. For sure. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Uh, are we done? Did we? Uh, did I answer any questions? Did I miss anyone? Thanks so much, you guys. This was a fun one. I like, you know, I like doing these. I hate to, I have to say, admit that I don't do them uh, a lot. These kind of, you know, here I'll show you stuff. Because I always feel kind of funny, like, look at all the stuff that I have. But I, for me, it is because it's my shop thing. When I open a shop, believe me, I'm going to be all ready. I mean, I still will want to put, you know, inventory and stuff like that in there also. I'm not saying that. But this is my aesthetic. My aesthetic is I live in an old witchy shop. So to me, this is, this is what my shop is going to look like is an old, and I don't mean a new witchy shop, an old witchy shop. So, domesticity calls your altars, fab. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank my gargoyles every day. Yeah, absolutely. I love mine for sure. Absolutely. Yay. All right. I got my boyfriend to watch this with me and he was even interested. Yay. All right, Caitlin. <laughs> Don't read that. <laughs> Oops. That should have been first. 
Uh, where will your shop be? It will be, I'm sure it will be somewhere around where I live. And the universe hasn't really told me that yet, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. I can say right now that I would think it would be somewhere near where I live, which is Rochester, New York right now. I don't know for sure, though, that I'm not supposed to follow where my kids are, which is towards Boston. I'm not sure. Right now, I would think here, this is what I know. This is where I grew up. I don't even know. Maybe I'm supposed to buy my grandparents' house and I'm supposed to do it here. If my aunt, something happens to her, let me say that very nicely. Um, and I was able to set this room up as an actual shop. I might do it out of here. I don't know. The universe hasn't told me yet. Okay, you're about to fall off by getting me. All right, thanks guys so much. I so appreciate it. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Yes, come near to Boston. Yay. My kids are there already, Natty. I'll have to in introduce you to my kids in May. I don't know if all of them will be here, but yay. All right, guys. Love you, love you, love you. Blessings. This was great fun. And tomorrow is my day off because Dave, is Dave still here? Dave is doing his live readings tomorrow, Wednesday nights, right? Hopefully. I'm thinking. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So tomorrow is my day off. So I will see you on Thursday, which will be the day before you all. Whew. I will probably upload a couple of videos though tomorrow because I have stories still to get through. Love you guys. Bye.